Our Canada's sesquicentennial does give us an opportunity to see how far we have come in the past 150 years and to reflect on how we can create a brighter future for all Canadians. Prior to Confederation, there was little organized health care in Canada, and medical care was hard to come by for Canada's poor, for members of minority groups, and for Indigenous peoples. Nous avons fait énormément de progrès en 150 ans. Quelques-unes des étapes et des réalisations les plus importantes du domaine des soins de santé au Canada vous sont présentées sur les bannières que, que nous avons créées pour rendre hommage au 150e anniversaire de Fondation du Canada. Yet there are continuing challenges associated with rapid changes in technology, concerns regarding access, inappropriate use, and affordability. And there are three specific areas where I think the health technology assessment community, working collaboratively with other health system stakeholders, has a major role to play going forward. And all three areas will stretch the boundaries of traditional HTA and challenge us to think in new ways. The first is the need to better support Canada's Indigenous people. There is a clear and troubling disparity in health outcomes between Indigenous and non-Indigenous Canadians. Consider the following. The rate of diabetes among First Nations people aged 45 and older is nearly twice the rate of other Canadians. The infant mortality rate for First Nations and Inuit children ranges from 1.7 to over four times the non-Indigenous average. And the suicide rate for Aboriginal youth living on reserves is five to six times higher than the rate for non-Aboriginal youth elsewhere in Canada. The final report of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada, released in 2015, included eight recommendations specific to health. And although there are some wonderful initiatives being led by healthcare leaders within Indigenous communities, the bottom line is that we need to approach this with open hearts and open minds. We need to be willing to listen. We need to recognize the value of traditional indigenous healing practices, and we need to be willing to change and to contribute to that change. And that process can begin right here at this year's symposium. This afternoon, we have a concurrent session on incorporating indigenous perspectives into health technology management with panelists representing First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples. In addition, one of our plenary panelists tomorrow morning Dr. Marcia Anderson, who is Cree Salto, and Dr. Anderson will address issues related to caring for Indigenous peoples as part of tomorrow morning's plenary session. The second area is the expanding opioid crisis in Canada that's resulting in epidemic-like deaths from overdose. Here in Ottawa in February, the opioid crisis suddenly had a name and a face. That was the face of grade nine stu student, Chloe Cotval. On February 12th, Chloe was found by her mother after taking pills that were laced with fentanyl. She died in hospital two days later. Chloe was 14 years old. Il existe malheureusement d'autres situations aussi dramatiques partout au Canada. Ce genre de, de tragédie nous motive tous. Les gens du domaine de la santé au Canada, nous voulons agir immédiatement. La CMTS est l'une de ces multiples organisations qui ont joint leurs efforts avec ceux des gouvernements fédéral, provinciaux et territoriaux pour mettre fin à cette crise des opioïdes au Canada. Our commitment to the joint action, statement of action to address the opioid crisis centers around evidence. We've already created two online resource centers that provide easy access to all of our evidence related to opioids and pain management, and much more work is underway. The third area is the evolution from health technology assessment to health technology management. Much of our focus in HTA has traditionally been uh, related to the adoption of new drugs, new devices, and procedures. And while HTA organizations in Canada and globally are doing important work in the areas of technology reassessment 
and disinvestment, we need to do more. We need to take a broader life cycle approach to technology assessment. We need to provide more meaningful engagement of patients and providers and other stakeholders. We need closer collaboration with regulators such as Health Canada. And we need a much greater focus on implementation considerations to support decision making. Last year, at the request of the Federal Deputy Minister of Health and with the support of the Federal Provincial Territorial Conference of Deputy Ministers, CADF developed a proposal to transform how we manage health technologies in Canada to support the triple aim of better health, better patient experience, and better value. And we've called this proposal our health technology management strategy. And I'm very pleased to report that the federal budget tabled on March 22nd included new funding for CADF in the amount of $36 million over five years to support elements of our HTM strategy. And you'll hear more about this in the coming months. Now, as I mentioned earlier, these three areas supporting Canada's Indigenous peoples, addressing the opioid crisis, and the shift to health technology management represent an expansion of traditional HTA. And there's lots of other issues and priorities that we need to address as well. But the thread that's binding all of these issues together is value. We speak about value frameworks and value-based purchasing, the value of information, and the value of innovation. We try to define what value means to different stakeholders. And that's why we decided to choose value as the central theme for this year's conference. Specifically, measuring value in theory and the real world. Ce thème nous sert de point de départ commun pour les présentations de cette année au symposium et nous rappelle aussi le rôle que nous jouons dans l'optimisation de la valeur pour le bénéfice de tous, tous les Canadiens et Canadiennes. Over the next two days, we'll consider value, both from a theoretical standpoint and in the real world, through three plenary sessions, eight breakfast sessions, 23 panels, 56 oral presentations, and over 80 poster presentations. And I'm very proud to say that we have attendees from all 10 Canadian provinces and three territories, and significant representation from the federal programs involved in healthcare. And we have excellent representation from our colleagues and partner HT agencies in Canada, from ANES, Health Quality Ontario, and the Institute of Health Economics. And let me publicly thank the CEOs of these fine organizations, Dr. Luke Boileau, Dr. Joshua Tepper, and Dr. Egon Johnson, for the exceptional work and collaborative spirit that they and their teams bring to the HTA community in Canada. We have international guests from Australia and England and South Korea, Sweden, Switzerland, Taiwan, and the United States. And we have a fantastic cohort of representatives from the patient community, and we've tried to make them feel more welcomed and more engaged than ever before. Once again, we're proud to have the symposium designated as a patients-included gathering by adhering to the five clauses in the patients-included conference charter. And we also have a large group of students this year. Now, all the students, every student, stand up and be recognized. <clears throat> toutes les étudiants, toutes les étudiants. Levez-vous, s'il vous plaît. <clears throat> These are the future stars of the HTA world, and we've created mentoring opportunities, networking opportunities, and recruiting opportunities for the students this year. And with all three of our plenary sessions being live streamed and two concurrent panels available via live webinar, we can expect a much larger national and international audience than the 870 delegates that are registered to attend in person. And as Peter said, we're a very social media friendly symposium or conference, so you're encouraged to tweet throughout the symposium, after the symposium, using other social media platforms as well. And we, so we have a great program. I hope you'll find that it delivers measurable value to your learning. J'ai bien hâte de discuter, de débattre et d'apprendre de vous tous durant les prochains jours. With that, I'd like to declare the 2017 Cadiz Symposium officially open. Thank you.